Welcome or welcome back. This video is on how to fix stick drift on a Wavebird sourcing the part from a Wii Nunchuck. First, let's remove the eight tri-wing screws from the back of the controller. Wavebird facts. The controller used RF, radio frequency technology for its wireless connection, which was relatively advanced for its time. It was the first reliable RF controller and supported up to 16 different radio frequencies to choose from. Take off the front plate and some of the buttons might fall off with it. Remove the motherboard from the housing, take off any pads, and remove the analog stick. This one was stuck a bit, so it took some convincing to remove it. Let's flip this over and check it out. So this plastic bracket is being held in by the battery terminal. There's two connections that we'll have to desolder so we can remove it easily. We're gonna remove the solder from here and here. I heat up the solder, wait till it's molten, and use my solder sucker to remove it. I use the same procedure on this area as well. The plastic should be able to be removed easily now. If it doesn't, go back and reflow the solder and suck it again. We've made it to the part we need to replace, and it's the joystick potentiometer assembly. We will need to desolder 10 points. Six of those points are for data, and four of those points are for securing the potentiometer assembly to the board. I start with removing all the solder from all six data points. And then on the last four, I have to use my solder sucker because they're too big for my desoldering gun. Now I can rock the component back and forth until it releases. If you feel friction when you wiggle it, go back and do the method again. You don't want to lift any pads, so make sure you're careful. Clean up the area with IPA and a cotton swab. This is the internals of the nunchuck. Let's harvest this joystick assembly. We'll use the same method as before. I'll use a solder sucker on the four secure points. And my desoldering gun for the data points. Quick tip, if you can feel the joint move freely, then pull the trigger for your vacuum. That way you know the solder will be removed easily. Now remove the component. It's time to install onto the Wavebird. It can only go in one way like a puzzle piece. Flip the board over and solder away. Make sure to hit all 10 points. Keep the assembly flush with the board while doing this. Quick tip, after you've put enough solder on a joint, lift your iron straight up. This will reduce bridging. Reinstall the plastic piece and make sure it's flush to the board. Let's solder it back in place. From here, you can see this lead did not stay on this side of the board, it fell out. To fix this, heat the solder and press the board down, then it will seat itself properly. Time for reassembly. Begin with putting the L and R boards back in their positions. Next is putting back on the frequency dial. Swing back in the C-Stick. Be sure to reset the L and R buttons. Put the board back in the back shell. Be sure the battery terminals are seated properly. Install the buttons and button pads on the top shell. Put on the analog stick cover, it can only go on one way. It's time to put both sides together. I like to hold the front side with my left hand, and with my right hand, navigate the back side until they connect together. Now to install the eight tri-wing screws. Wavebird facts. It can work up to 20 feet away from the console. The Wavebird would become the first modern wireless gaming controller, leading the growth of wireless controllers starting with the seventh gen Wii remote. It's finished, let's give it a test.
The Waveburn handle is awesome. Since we source a part from a nunchuck, the controller is full OEM without the need from a third party part. Thanks for making it this far. Please remember to like and subscribe. Hey, and thanks for hanging. I'll see you in the next video.